Hello dear viewers and subscribers, supporters and friends, and welcome to QuickSave TV. This is Mike Pushkin and this is going to be a QuickSave daily. Supposed to be daily number three, however, due to various technical difficulties, it's going to be daily number one. I've already made the work on daily one and daily two. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and compose it into one because it just it didn't work out. As you may or may not know, I don't have the best internet in the world, especially right now in Greece. It's a big difficulty internet here. It's it's horrible, right? And um, any difficulty with uploading on YouTube becomes a gigantic pain in the ass, and there's nothing I can do with that. Basically, what happened is that computer crashed as I was testing something out with the Death Knight as I was uploading, and I was uploading, it was the sixth hour out of eight hours that I demanded to upload the file. So the file size of the Quick Save Daily, uh, number one, was in total almost three gigabytes, and in order to upload the file of that size, of that magnitude, it would take eight hours. I uploaded for six hours, then it crashes, I restart computer, try to upload again the same file, although YouTube is supposed to assist you in that, and it's supposed to work, it does not. And what happened is that I, I needed to upload the same file over again. And because the quick save daily number one was for yesterday, April 11th, you understand, right? I'm not meeting the deadlines. Right now it's 7.20 uh, GMT plus 2, uh, April 12th. And I just assume I'm just going to make the uh, daily. First daily is going to be for 12th of April instead of 11th of April, which is really sad. I'm still going to talk about the same things I wanted to talk about, but this is this is the reasoning, okay, what happened, in short. Now, um, I have cut down the quality for this kind of videos. I'm going to have, generally, I plan to have a small video of me in the left corner, right? In the left corner. No, in the left corner, <laughs> in the left bottom corner of a very small size and quality. And the video overall will be 720p, not 1080p. And will have slightly, generally lower bitrate so that I can upload it faster and easier. Because there's just no other way for me to do that right now. In the future, if something will change, it will be changed. But right now, that's the case. And the... Another thing I would like you to do is refer to the description and there you will find the um, survey about the advertisement of Quick, on QuickSave TV on my channel. I've created a specific survey for you, for all of you, for subscribers and viewers, so that you can uh, voice your opinion on the topic, whether you mind it or whether you hate it, because it would be really, really, it's very important for me, your feedback on the topic. So if you don't like something, I will have to adjust. Because I've allowed in-stream in -stream advertising for my videos, which means every time you turn on the video, there's supposed to be... Uh, from 5 to 20 seconds advertisement playing and sometimes when you finish watching the video and I would like to find out your opinion about it, right? So whether you like it, whether you don't like it, go ahead and tell me. And you can also leave a lot of comments. I left quite a lot of space for comments and I'm reading them. Now that we're done with all the announcements and which took us three and a half minutes, let's go ahead and discuss the topic of today. Now how I recommend you to watch it. Although there's going to be a Skyrim playing in the background, some Skyrim gameplay, random footage of me playing the Death Knight right now, I will talk about stones for the character, the uh, standing stones, how do you select stone for your character, and etc. So you don't really need to watch that, you can just minimize it and just listen to me while playing Skyrim on your computer or your Xbox or PS3. So it's it can be just as well audio presented as well as video. There's going to be nothing interesting except the video, uh, except of ex except for the footage of Skyrim at the background, that's it. Now, general idea. How do you select a stone for your character? Um, that's a very important topic to think about when you form your character and as you advance the, advance the levels from the 1st to 81st level, or more or less, if you modded the game, and it's very important to understand what do you actually need what do you actually can get from the standing stones, which all give various bonuses. Of course, keep in mind, unlike in Oblivion, where you would select one standing stone, uh, you would select the birth sign, and you would be forced to use it for the remainder of the game. Here, you can easily switch the stones. In Skyrim, you can easily switch the stones, and because of that, it's very simple to adjust your strategy depending on the where you are in the game. Like, for example, when in the beginning you maybe would like a faster leveling speed, whereas in the middle and end game, you would rather like to have some more resistances or specific skills and additions. Uh, there are uh, 13 standing stones in the game in Skyrim. I have took liberty and took the 13 stones and just 
div uh, design three groups and put them into those groups. So we have first group A, faster leveling. We have group B, specific skills. And group C, combat efficiency or effect slash effectiveness. So in group A, we have warrior stone, mage stone, thief stone, and a lover stone. Each of them, except for the lover stone, give you 20% faster uh, skill growth for specific trees. So warrior stone gives you, uh, gives you faster growth rate. 20% uh, faster growth rate, uh, improvement rate of the warrior skills. That being 100, 200, smithing, heavy armor, archery, and something else, yeah, block, and block. Mage stone gives these bonuses to illusion, alteration, conjuration, restoration, destruction, and enchanting. The thief stone gives these bonuses to light armor, um, pickpocketing, uh, pick locking. Lock pick, uh, pick locking and lock picking, excuse me, and what else is that? Okay, speech, alchemy, and something else, which I don't really remember right now. It's weird. Sneak and sneak. Woohoo! I remember all of them. And additionally, though, not only you get this 20% bonus from each of these stones, you can also use the sleep bonus if you sleep in taverns or in your own home once you get that opportunity or in general beds generally beds in skyrim and if you sleep for long enough just for even several hours two three hours is enough you get the bonus rested or well rested or even the um, uh, what is that Com lover's comfort i think i don't remember uh, it, that that you can get if you are married in the game to a character and you uh, sleep in the same bed with this character, if this character is your companion, or if you are in the house with this character and you just sleep in the bed. In, um, this way you can get... So, basically, game um, gives you benefits if you attach yourself to a place and keep doing... Like, uh, like if you do things in cyclic matter. So, sleep, go out adventuring, go back, sell things, sleep, go out adventuring, sell things, sleep. And if you do this cycle, you get some more experience. And the Lava Stone... Although it gives um, somehow better bonus in that, that it gives you an opportunity to rise all the skills at the same time. It's plus 15% for all the skills. It overrides and forbids you from using the well-rested or uh, lover's comfort or just rested. You cannot sleep and get the bonus from it anymore. So if you select the lover stone, although it seems much more beneficial, sadly, it's almost the same. It's almost the same as if you would take, and even worse in some occasions than if you would take just a specific stone. But again, it's a pain in the ass because you have to adjust all the time. For example, you want to raise up your smithing really quickly. You have to go to the warrior stone, switch to it. You have to go, you have to raise your smithing. Then you go back, you select the mage stone back. And, uh, and the same with the mage stone or the thief stone. It's a big pain in the ass. But nevertheless, the group B is specific skills. This, this stones provide you specific skills which you can use to survive better, survive or kill the enemies and etc. We have Ritual Stone, which allows you to once a day raise the dead. And the spell itself is very strong. You can actually even raise, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, you can raise mammoths and giants, which means that you can raise even enemies which normally you wouldn't be able to. And then you have Shadow Stone, which allows you to turn, invis to turn invisible once a day, which is kind of nice, but it's not as useful. I don't consider it very useful because it doesn't directly improve your combat efficiency or effectiveness, and it doesn't give you additional opportunities in combat. Yes, yes, you might say, oh, I can sneak back behind the enemy, you know, and use additional sneak attack, but, you know... That's not serious, or is it? It's just, every 24 hours, you will be able to turn invisible for 60 seconds. Wow, how useful is that? Don't think so. And don't think it's like permanent invisibility. Once you do something stupid, you're visible again, so don't even dream about it. Serpent Stone allows you to paralyze and poison the target, and the paralyze lasts for 5 seconds, which I consider much more useful, and the most useful probably in the whole specific skills group, because it allows you to paralyze the target and essentially beat it up until it's dead, because 5 seconds is a lot of time, and if you keep beating the target for 5 seconds, it's just there's so many things you can do. And then the Tower Stone allows you to unlock any locked mechanism, up to an expert, diffi expert difficulty once a day. I consider personally this stone the most useless in the game in that it allows you to unlock a mechanism 
doesn't allow you to unlock a master's lock, allows you to unlock expert and all the way, you know, from expert and below, like expert, adventurer, um, what is it, novice, journeyman, whatever, whatever these called, like everything except the, the hardest locks in the game. Because generally, one unlock per day is not enough, and additionally, you just lose experience from that. You don't get anything from it. Yeah, you could say, like, you know, so I don't have to bother, but it's just once a day, and it doesn't influence your combat efficiency, so it's kind of crappy. Group C includes combat efficiency and combat effectiveness things. That's how I t call them, at least. So we have Apprentice Stone, probably the second worst uh, stone in the game after the Tower Stone, in my opinion, which gives you 100% additional magic regeneration and 100% magical weakness. Weakness to, to spells, to spell casting, to magic. And unlike in Oblivion, where we would have a solid bonus of 100 magicka, eh? and the same 100% weakness. The problem here is that magical regeneration is not so valuable as, you know, the, the solid mana. But and at the same time, not only that, you're also going to be really pathetic when fighting against mages. And you will have to be really careful not to get hit. And generally, it just seems like a pointless waste because it doesn't really... It's not as useful because the next one overrides it completely and works much better. I'm talking about Adrenach Stone. Adrenach Stone gives you additional 50 magicka, 50% spell absorb, and 50% slower, uh, slower magic regeneration. Now, this is probably some of, one of the strongest um, stones in the game, in my opinion, because it allows you, although it doesn't give you a lot of magicka, right? Uh, as you progressively go higher and higher in levels, 50 magicka will not be so serious. But in the beginning of the game, it's 50% additional magicka. Okay, it's 50 points, it's 50% additional magic. It's a huge boost in magicka, and it's just unbelievably strong. But then you have also 50% spell absorb, which means that for the remainder of the game, you will have... You, not only you receive twice as low damage from any magical attacks on your character, but you also absorb 50% of the damage dealt to you into your magicka. So you, you essentially you regenerate your magicka faster when fighting against mages. And you have 50% slower regen, which can be combated easily if you just put one clothing, which gives 60% faster regeneration, which means you already over, override it, override this 50% slower, and you're already in good shape. The next one is Lady Stone. I feel it's quite underrated. I like it. It could have been stronger, but it's strong enough in my opinion. I'm using it currently on my Death Knight. Death Knight. It allows you to have higher, 25% higher stamina regeneration and 25% higher uh, health regeneration. Very, very nice because it allows you, if you wear heavy armor, it allows you to have this additional boost of um, stamina regeneration when you actually wouldn't be able to have it. And for the characters that don't use healing spells it's again a very strong solution because your health just degenerates a little bit faster don't expect like gigantic numbers but it's still pretty pretty, pretty much nice then we have the lord stone which gives you 50 armor a speed and a face better and the resist magic 25 percent which is really really nice now 50 armor is not a very solid change and will not help you a lot why because the limit of the armor in the game is 567 Okay, which means once you reach 567, anything above that will not matter. But not only that, 50 compared to 567, how much? It's 10 percent. But resist magic is 25 percent out of the total 85 that you can accumulate. Now, if you play Breton and you suddenly like alteration spells, alteration skills, and you go all the way up and you receive the uh, additional magic resistance, uh, resistance from magical attacks, 30 percent, and you are a Breton, you get additional 20 percent, and you also have a Lordstone, additional 25 percent, in total you have 75 percent magical resistance, which means that you are essentially bulletproof to all the magical attacks and the dragon, the sum of the dragon attacks, which is pretty kick ass. But again, I wouldn't recommend it to take it for, I wouldn't recommend it to you to take Lord Stone just for the armor. Resist magic is a great, great, great opportunity and it's the only stone that is outright defensive. Very, very cool stone. I love it. And we finish up, wrap it up with the Steed Stone. Steed Stone allows you to wear any kind of armor without it weighing something. So it's going to weight absolutely zero, any kind of armor you wear. Also going to add you additional 100 points of carrying weight. And your armor will not hinder you as you move in it. Which means, even if you wear heaviest armor and you don't have perks, specific perks in the, in the tree, in order to make it easier for you, 
With the Steel Stone, you can not only utilize the, the heaviest armors in the game without it waiting for you, you don't have to waste perks on that, and you get additional 100 carrying capacity, which is crazy. Steel Stone is one of the craziest stones in the game, although it does not directly uh, influence your combat abilities, it's the efficiency, you know. For each of your runs, you will be able to carry a lot more stuff, especially if you wear heavy armor. If you wear heavy, heavy armor, you're going to have something like you have uh, 35 for your armor weight. You have additional, say, 10 and 10. It's boots and cuffs and the gauntlets, uh, which is 55 in total. And then you have your helmet, which is, let's say... Let's say 10, another 10, 65. So in total you get additional 165 weight. And you also carry weight. And you also don't get hindered by your armor, which is absolutely awesome. So in conclusion, I'm just going to say that it's very important to pick the proper armor. Uh, no, armor. It's very important to pick up the proper stone for your character. And it's not, not stupid at all to switch these stones as you go through the game. Because in the beginning of the game you need something, in the middle of the game you need something else, and game you aim for something else as well. So, you have to constantly change them and try to figure out which one works for you the best. I hope this uh, daily number one was able to bring you some insight in your Skyrim experience. I don't know where this daily business will be going. I want to make seven daily episodes and see how it's going to go, for which I really require all of your feedback. I want you to write comments, to send me messages on quicksavetv at gmail.com and send me messages on YouTube because I really want to see what do you feel about that, is it useful, is it a waste of time, and do you mind that the quality is not the highest? Because if you do, the daily is not the best solution for me. I cannot stream and I cannot upload big files for the same particular reason because it's a pain in the ass and if computer crashes, the particularly large files, they just refuse to be uploaded. And it's horrible. It's very difficult. I just, I cannot stress it enough. But I want to hear your opinion. Do you mind that the quality is cut down? Do you mind that, you know, do you actually like this whole business? Do you find it enjoyable or does it bring insight in your experience? And yesterday I also answered the some of the community questions which I received. Uh, we're going to make this daily a little bit longer than I expected. I wanted to have like 12 minutes. We're already 17 minutes. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, I'm going to answer these two questions. First, questions oh, oh, first question was from one of the subscribers. It was about, oh, about, what? about how to fight um, Pumas. How do you call Pumas? Ah, yeah, yeah. The... Uh, I wish I was streaming because I would see chat and you could tell me. Now, how do you fight those ice wraths and how do you find those pumas? Skyrim daily, where's those questions? I mean the questions. Oh, it's empty because I didn't save it yesterday. How smart of you, Mike? Very, very smart. Here? Okay, maybe this is the it. Okay, find ice wraths and saber cats. Yes, pumas. Ice wraths and saber cats. How do you. Did I say it correctly? Saber cats, right? Saber cats. Okay, ice rats. It's he says that the block seems to be uh, block seems to need to be very high to be effective. Now, if you're a melee warrior, which is was the question I didn't get it properly. If you're a melee warrior and you want to fight ice rats or saber cats, the best idea for you would be to properly time your attacks. But because these two creatures are very different, it's very hard to. It, there's no, you know, there's no template, you fight them like this every time. It depends on the situation and where you fight. Let's assume that you fight Ice Wrath in a field, which is the most difficult. Let's imagine that you ride in a plain field, there's no abstra abstractions which you can use to your, um, to your defense, to improve your defensive capabilities, and you have to fight on the open. Now with Ice Wrath, not only it's an annoying little creature, and it's a very quick creature, it also attacks quite hard, and it leaves a trail of snow, of spikes behind it, of icy spikes. Be careful not to step on them so you don't get additional damage, and generally, if you have a high stamina reserve, go ahead and spend it all in this fashion. If you use one handed and shield, do something like bash, hit, hit, bash, hit, hit, bash, hit, hit, and repeat until stamina runs out. If you have the two handed weapon, just go ahead and do bash, hit, bash, hit, bash, hit. This way you can get additional hits while your stamina is high. Once you run out of stamina, just try, try to play defensively and time your attacks in this fashion so you kind of dodge his attacks and you keep the distance just enough to hit him. You might want to see a video of me fighting a giant. In there you might see me uh, getting just enough away from the giant. He's making his attack with the club 
and then getting back, hitting him 1-1 one, one, and just going back. Doing the same thing, getting close, letting him hit, hitting him a couple of times, running away. That's the, what you should do. With Saber Cat, it's a little bit different because Saber Cat is an annoying asshole and an absolutely devastating creature. Very, very hard to fight as a warrior. Now, what you might want to do is, again, do the same strategy. You want to bash, attack a couple of times, bash again. Especially effective in such strategy would be to use an axe, because axe also has a bleeding damage if you have a specific perk selected, which will help you a little bit more. Now, the same thing. You have to time your attack properly. Try to not catch the attacks from the cyber, uh, cyber cat, because... Uh, saber cat, because what cyber cat? Try to not catch attack from the cyber cat. Two, two months will be devastated. Now the point is that, as long as you don't catch these critical, very, very powerful attacks, you should be fine and you shouldn't lose a lot of hit points. If you, if we assume that you will die from two hits, just try not to get them. And as you go in and your stamina runs out, you might want to use a potion for stamina, or just try to finish the enemy faster, or use your secondary weapon. Maybe magical, maybe bow, and etc. would be really nice. And another question was about the, what is the most disbalanced class in Skyrim? And what I answered is, and I answered the same thing, I don't think, I don't quite feel that there is a disbalanced class in Skyrim. Uh, although each player, because of his, specific, his or her specific playstyle, can make one or the other class very powerful, there's no such thing as, you know, this is outright strongest. There's always strong solutions, there's always stronger solutions. Just don't think about it so much in the terms what is disbalanced. Don't do what others do. Do what you find yourself to do. Deviate from the things you were doing before and just try, try, try. And eventually you're going to go to this one thing which you're going to use a lot. You're going to have like a specific set of skills you use all the time and other skills that you don't really need and don't really use. That's going to be your class and that's what is going to be disbalanced because it's going to be formed specifically for you, designed for you, and only your performance will influence the quality of it. Now, also, uh, I'll try to include the home task in these dailies and today I will give you a home task for April 14th. Until April 14th, I want you to do the following. I want you to take one your secondary skill. Let me just go ahead and minimize it and find this crap. Homework. Take one secondary skills of yours and stop using it. Just permanently cut it out. Under the secondary skill here, we understand something. For example, you're a warrior and you use a bow as a ranged combat solution. Stop using the bow. Just stop using it and use something else. Start using magic, start using restoration spells, whatever you want. If you're a mage and you heavily rely as your secondary weapon on two-handed sword, stop using two-handed swords. Start using block, start using one-handed, whatever you want, but not what you were relying before. And I promise you, you will find a lot about your class and you will start playing much, much better. Submit your experiences until 14th of April, preferably early in the morning, GMT0, right? until 10 at least so I have time to read it and that I have time to use it. You can submit them to quicksafetv at gmail.com or to personal messages on YouTube. I'm just going to write down your opinions and, you know, talk about them a little bit. Maybe your questions, whatever you have. And yes, that will be it about it. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the quick save daily and I really want to hear your opinion. Please go ahead and write about your opinions in comments. Follow the link to the survey to tell me what you think about the advertisements on my channel and don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could bring some insight in your lives and I hope to see you again soon on my channel. Bye-bye.